Several requests have come in for me to review the Back to the Future films, and so this is a steelbook of the 1985 classic, and it really is rather nice. But best news of all, they've made a fabulous job of the film to video transfer. So let's take a look. Bob Gale and Robert Zemeckis dreamt up this time-travelling comedy adventure, which sees Marty McFly, played by Michael J. Fox, sent back to 1955 in a DeLorean time machine. Columbia paid them to develop and write the screenplay, but passed on it in the end. Unfortunately, so did every other studio. Steven Spielberg wanted to help them get it made, but the pair were reticent, as they'd made three films with Spielberg previously, and none were successful, with 1941 being the third of those films. And so they decided to put Back to the Future on the shelf, and Zemeckis waited for the next good screenplay to come his way, before opting to direct another film. And that film turned out to be Michael Douglas's Romancing the Stone. There's nothing like having success behind you in order to get your next film made. Romancing the Stone was released full length on Super 8 by Duran Film Services as part of their deal with 20th Century Fox, but unfortunately, as far as I know, nothing ever came out from Back to the Future, except a few years ago when Classic Home Cinema got hold of a few prints of the Huey Lewis and the News, the Power of Love music video, which is included on these discs as an extra. So there was nothing previously, there might have been a trailer release in America, and maybe an extract or two that I know nothing about, but up until really the laser discs and then the DVDs, there was no possibility of really enjoying this film in the home. It's hard to imagine this film without Michael J. Fox and Christopher Lloyd, who plays Doc Brown, but perhaps the real star is the fabulous DeLorean done up as the time machine. And with that in mind, it's hard to believe there are so few special effects in this movie, and those that there are, are in the main done practically on the set. And that's perhaps one of the reasons the 35mm of this ended up looking so good. I think this film is completely nuts, but it's just about perfect. The cast, the script, the music, the whole look of the film, and that score by Alan Silvestri, it's another one of those great scores that has become synonymous with cinematic history, and every time you hear it, you know what it's from, and it just raises you up. No wonder this film has such a following, and of course it's on the Universal Studios tour, the distinctive town square with the town hall and the clock tower at the top. Not many of us miss that when we're going round on those tour buses. Fortunately, the quality of the film goes over to the 4K really well, unlike the Blu-ray which lacks the definition, colour and density. However, if the Blu-ray was taken on its own, it would probably be considered rather good, but the 4K just completely destroys it. The aspect ratio is 185 to 1, the sound is Dolby Atmos, and the running time is 1 hour and 56 minutes. There are over 2.5 hours of extras, but I think they've all been seen before. The budget was $19 million, and the worldwide gross at the box office was $382 million, but of course since then there's been VHS sales, DVD, Laserdisc, Blu-ray, CDI, just about everything you can think of, and now the 4K as well. This film was shot entirely on 35mm, but there were 70mm blow-up prints, and so I expect Universal were expecting this to be a big hit in the summer of 1985. If you check on imdb.com, you'll see there's also VistaVision listed here, which is the 8 perf horizontal 35mm, and that suggested to me it was a industrial light magic special effects shot, a la Star Wars, and so in Thomas G. Smith's Bible on ILM, there's Back to the Future, and indeed Steve Gawley with a DeLorean model there, creating a VistaVision special effect to be integrated seamlessly at the end of Back to the Future, where it takes off to fly into the future. I'm really pleased I went for this steel book. It's got a really nice sheen to it, got a nice feel. It's not one of the best I've seen, but it is very nice. And the 4K disc in here is really quite beautiful. In fact, in this little home cinema here, it was just like watching a film in the cinema, albeit on a much smaller screen. 
but I think it's an exceptional transfer and can be highly recommended. I went for the single film because I was never particularly enamoured with the sequels. I mean, I did enjoy them, but this film was concluded so perfectly. Everything was wrapped up beautifully, and then there was that bit of mystery at the end. And of course, making the sequels, they rather spoiled that mystery for me. So I didn't particularly feel like I wanted to see those again yet. But I'm told they're equally as good, if not better, than this first film. So if you want to go for the trilogy set, I don't think you should have any qualms in doing so. But I have to admit that the asking price did put me off a little. I think it was £55 in HMV, something like that. And so uh, that was another reason for getting the single film. And so, if like me, you're into these time travel convoluted movies, there was another one we watched a few days before. It's in the HMV Premium Collection, and it's the 1979 Nicholas Mayer film, who brought us Star Trek II and Star Trek VI, two of the best, time after time. Now, it's not the best video transfer, cine to video transfer you're ever going to see, and the disc face is a little boring. However, it does come with a poster, which sadly I don't think I'll ever be putting up. And it also comes with four art cards. And uh, my wife took these out. She said, oh, these are better. Look at this, the colour. Then she went to the other three and oh dear. So then they're, they're not exactly ideal, but if you don't know the film time after time, I think you'll know there that it's about Jack the Ripper. And in fact, this is a film starring Malcolm McDowell as H.G. Wells, who actually builds the time machine rather than just writing the novel. And uh, one of his friends turns out to be Jack the Ripper, played by David Warner, and he makes his getaway from the police by stealing Wells's time machine and ends up in 1979 San Francisco. And Wells then has to go in pursuit. Uh, it's a really good adventure. I had not seen it in years. I'd only ever seen it on 35mm previously. And this is a really good second best. So if you enjoy Back to the Future, this isn't so much a comedy, but it's another good convoluted time traveling adventure. So another one recommended, not particularly great image quality, not the best sound, but a thoroughly enjoyable flick. So I think that brings us to the end. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a like and perhaps consider subscribing. So I'll be encouraged to create more content again in the future. Until the next time, bye bye for now.